Good morning and thank you for joining us on Plus TV of the Press where we get into the news headlines from our national dailies and we get into reviews and analysis of the major headlines from the dailies. Joining me this morning for analysis and review of the dailies is Taiwo Yudele, partner PwC. Thank you, Taiwo, for joining us this morning. My pleasure. And also on the regular, we have him, Femi Dowu Adegoke. Um, thank you very much, Femi, for joining us this morning on Of the Press. Good morning. And we'll start up this morning of the Press with the nation newspaper, Lagos House of Assembly boils sacked men replaced. And as to begin strike over payroll orders, government action illegal, says. And Nigeria gets second COVID-19 case. Buhari sets up tax force. Still in the nation newspaper, budget 2020 caught inevitable, says minister. And Sanusi deposed, banished as Bayero becomes Amir. That's a major burner in all of the nation national dailies this morning. And is guilty of disobedience in subordination. And government ACF calls for camp. Still in the nation newspaper, state chairman Bak Oshomele, Gadom at Secretariat, Uzadima, we need a stable party. And lastly in the nation newspaper, Areoye Oyebola dies at 85 and knocks for social media bill at hearing. And one of the major issues across all the dailies this morning is the dethronement of the um, Emil Kanu, Sanusi Lamido, uh, Mohammed. And the second, and let, me, let me take your reaction to this. When, when all of this event happened yesterday, what was going through your mind? Well, when the news came yesterday that um, they hosted uh, Emir of Kano, yes. uh, uh, Sule Lamido Sanusi, yeah. had been dethroned, well, it just brought to mind for me the irresponsibility that we've had in government. And that's one of the reasons why some people feel they are our governors or political class, they have too much powers. For me, uh, the, it's, been a, it's been a personal battle between the governor of Kano State and Emir Sule Lamido Sanusi. So, and this is taking further now to desecrate our, uh, in Nigeria, our, what we call our cultural and uh, heritage. Because it's been personal, it's clear from the onset that Lamido was not in support of um, well, Ganduje, Ganduje coming yeah. back as governor. And he has been an open critic of the governor in the state. I remember the issue of borrowing for the rail. Yes. And then he's um, like a rebel. Uh, so so the, you're, you're saying this more for personal vendetta than actually necessarily the, the reason they put forth of him disobe disobeying traditional um, customs and, and rules? And no, laws? they didn't say he disobeyed yeah. traditional rule. Mm. He failed to attend meetings and that yeah. meeting is not traditional meetings there is meeting with the state government i agree he has disobeyed i agree he walked into the trap mm. trap set for him i think samusi just walked into it tell mm. you you have you have a different opinion to what um yeah no, I, I think, you know, for me i didn't see it coming to be honest yeah. i was surprised when uh, the news broke yesterday um, my thinking is, I, I know that SLS has always been that person who is very blunt and he will say his mind yeah. even while he was at CBN. It's not just that he started this when he became the Emir. I think that more fundamentally, Nigeria needs to think about how do we define the roles of traditional rulers. Rulers, yes. And how do we, what, what will be their place within the constitution of Nigeria? Uh, because some of the point, like you said, it was in subordination. I was wondering, why would the governor in the first place be issuing instructions to anemia? You know, uh, I don't fully understand uh, the the main reasons why this happened, but it's, it seems like it's to do with politics yeah. and people not aligning with themselves, yeah. and then the, the the play of power. Yeah, but Ayaki Kali is, isn't the governor of the state more 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 powerful, more superior than than the emir of, of of a state? Yes, the governor is the political custodian yes. of the state. Yeah, it's, but don't forget that the emirs were before the governors and the emir they are the custodian of our culture and tradition is the, le the leader of the people so for me personally i feel the governor is seeing um an emir who is outspoken we all know sanusi he says it as it is it doesn't matter whose goal is hot he he's called out the entire northern elite. Oh yeah, he's been, the, he's been uh, quite vocal lately. Egg, egg. No, he has been yeah, like that yeah. forever. But, but so. I'm quite concerned about the fact that this is a democracy. Can mm. can we see experience an Amir being deposed and the the throne and sent on exile? <laughs> it, it comes up like one of those medieval kingdom movies that I used to see in Africa. Magic. As, as, yes, I used to see as a child. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a democracy. Is this obtainable? No. 
Now you're coming back to what you're saying. Yes. This is our democracy that we say we practice, which I have always said it. We don't have democracy. Shouldn't people be have freedom of speech? Because for me, I think he's being called out for standing for uh, what is right. That's what he's been punished for. Mm. As yes, Tawo, you're going to say no, no, something. No, I think I think we just need to. I, I think we need to define where everybody stands. For example, I agree with you that the governor, of course, is is the most powerful person in the state. That, that's not under contention. Uh, but what if it was a religious leader that you don't agree with what they have said? Would you really remove them? Yes. Right. Yeah, and you it's wouldn't gone on, do on, that. It's, 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 it's gone to asylum it's somewhere yeah. in Nassau State, yeah. and I'm just wondering. It's, like, it's, it, it looks very uh, weird and. Uh, it doesn't look appropriate, actually. So maybe this could have been dealt with in a more civilized Slightly, manner. Yes. Because you had an acquisition against someone. We haven't heard their side of the story. Uh, we haven't seen the report that says, based on all these allegations, here are the findings and the recommendations. Uh, it, it just seems to and be like And it depends, Amy has not even made a statement. It's yeah, not said anything made just any yet. statement yet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's quickly go to the Punch newspaper. First headline in the Punch newspaper, coronavirus, federal government to cut budget, six new oil benchmark. And that is becoming pretty troubling. As to declares two-week warning strike, alleges federal government ignores agreements. And APC may set up caretaker committee, appoint acting chair. Nigeria records second coronavirus case, Buhari raises panel. Gando J. De Front banishes Sanusi, appoints Adobayero's son, a new emir, and Sanusi showed total disrespect for office of governor, says Kano, and deposed monarch banished to Nasra ACF course for CAM. 23 bonds as vehicles crashes, explodes in Jigawa. Policeman seeks 1 billion naira compensation for hospital for daughter's death and gets citizenship through investment island woos Nigerians. Still in the punch this morning, Ogun Banks on World Bank $5 million to combat erosion. Tenant pushes landlady to death over door closure. Wow. And Lagos Assembly removes two officers, suspends two. Another case, Nigeria records another second case of coronavirus. What are your yeah. thoughts? Um, well, in the news, it is said that um, these second cases was actually one of the people who come in contact with the index. With the, with the, with the, with the Italian the, yeah, man. Yeah, with the Italian man. So, well, I, I feel Nigeria is doing pretty well in combating this uh, uh, outbreak. You think corona. so? Yeah, I think we're okay. doing I think we're, it, it, we're curbing the spread. How? But do, do, would, you, would you want to throw more light into that? If you yeah, say you the, believe the, we're, we're doing well in, in, in containing the spread, maybe you want to tell, tell us how. What, what do you think? What okay. do you feel you see they're doing that? Is yeah, like, us, like in Lagos, where we are now, yes. the center in Yaba, it's functional. Okay. Yeah, so, and I have, I have people who have been to the airport have said there are measures in place now. Now, not just the regular feeling yes, of form. Yes, yeah, yeah, you, you have to go through, pain. you have to go through feeling of pain and then you get questioned and tested now. So there are more, and then people have come forward from the flight that brought the Italian. So people have come forward, get tested. Some are, a lot of them have been uh, let go because they are free of the coronavirus. So I think we're, we're pretty fine. Right. Many Nigerians have said, Nigerians, as it is, we're not taking the case of coronavirus that seriously. Like we did the case of Ebola in 2014. And that's because people feel at the end of the day that um, it's, it's, nobody particularly has been seen with 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 a case with a, with a case of the virus, Taiwo, how do you react to this? Yeah, I, I think maybe on one hand, I do agree that we seem to be managing it um, fairly well. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit better than even some of the developed countries. Uh, in terms of whether Nigerians are taking it seriously, I do think they are taking it seriously. Um, you know, you go everywhere and you see everybody is aware of it and they're trying to do something about it. I also came in from, uh, I went to Senegal last week and I saw what they have at the airport, uh, which I think is, is good. Um, I think beyond all of this, uh, government needs to think beyond just adjusting the budget. Yes. I think this is a very big issue. Uh, so this is going to have an impact on so many things from our revenue to the cost of uh, borrowing and funding our borrowing. Uh, even in terms of a priority, in terms of what we're going to be spending more yes. money on. Uh, if you take out the non-discretionary spend, okay. we do have money left for, for development. I think, you know, one of the other uh, headlines you read, uh, asked you, I think yes, the, timing just of, come to that. Yeah, yes, please. the timing of this is completely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know that the trigger for this is the NIP PPS. Yes, um, the, yeah, the EPS, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So you don't want transparency as to how you're being paid. 
you know, all this thing about you're trying to control university, it's just by design. But, but, but don't, you don't you think that universities should be granted autonomy? Because they've always asked for autonomy. You don't think they're due for autonomy? It doesn't affect your autonomy. autonomy. So okay. you're, I'm saying that your salary is 10 naira. Yes. I don't want to pay you by cash. I want to pay you electronically. How does it affect your autonomy? Yeah. I haven't decided I'm going to change your syllabus, appoint your lecturers for you, decide how you get promoted. I I'm not touching all of that. Yes. I just say I want to pay you electronically so we can all see what you have been paid. Um, but but they are alleging that the federal government is, 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 is going back on, on what the agreement was, was, was initially. And so if there was an agreement then, and the, the federal government is reneging re on it right now, don't you think it's enough for them to protest and, yeah, and call for the there, strike? There have always been agreements with ASU, yes. like you also have with the medical doctors. There have always been agreements. Many of those agreements, you know from day one, that government has the capacity to even deliver on half of them. Um, because if you have protracted um, strikes for six months, government will try and find a way to negotiate something. Yeah. So these things have always been there. Government haven't met all of those agreements, but to now go on strike when we are dealing with coronavirus, oil prices are down, this insecurity, yeah, yeah. it's too much to yeah. add on top of it another crisis. And yeah. once people are, you know, once the, 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 the students are at home, it adds to the insecurity and the... Um, all the other Absolutely. issues. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now let's take a look at this day newspaper. This morning with us, federal government considers reduction of 2020 budget size or benchmark. Stock market falls as bond yields rise. And federal government moves to minimize crisis as ASU begins two week strike. And that you find on page six in this day newspaper. Nigeria records second case of coronavirus. And this seems to cut across all the dailies we've read out so far. Sanusi's detrimental banishment raised legal constitutional issues. Aminu becomes Kano Amir, or Basinger says removal, undeserved. And tackling viral impact, that's an opinion piece in the this day newspaper. Now, federal government considers reduction of the 2020 budget size, the oil benchmark. Now, you, you did make some um, reference to it earlier when you were talking. Let, let's talk about this a little bit. Um, Femi, let's start with you. Well, I will just say or add to what you said. Yes. Well, our budget in the first instance, like I've always said here, is uh, like a poor man's budget. We are 200 million people, we don't even have enough. And now with the situations around the globe, with the benchmark of the, uh, of the oil price coming down, with the coronavirus, I think it's the right thing to do for the government to cut down on the budget and prioritize, like he said. We need to cut do down the budget, but they, yeah. they, they, they also approve a $22.7 billion loan for the president. I yeah, mean, how, doesn't this impact negatively? Just finish your thought. Yeah, he, he has mentioned that. Yes. We have to look at, we're borrowing, he, he talked about the borrowing. Yes. Now we want to borrow, but where are we going to pay back? So that's why we need to cut all these things and then prioritize what we need to spend. Yeah, and I do. You, you know, interestingly, yes. Taiwan, sorry to cut you, they mm -hmm. say this loan is not meant to cause any trouble, you know, but I'm concerned about. Uh, are we are we are we what borrowing as it is right now as a nation? Should we still go borrowing? I mean, knowing that we, we our 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 debt our debt in index it's pretty high. What, what are your thoughts on this? Mm. I always say you know that borrowing in itself is not wrong, right? So if you look at the breakdown of the twenty two point seven billion dollars. Um, I think that from my own estimation, only about five billion dollars of it is worth borrowing for. So you have things wow. like even for rail, right? Rail and port. Yeah. Rail and port are commercially viable. You do not need to borrow to do it. Yeah, you only need to create the environment for the private sector. They will do it because they can make money. You don't even you just let them run, run with it. Then you have a lot of stuff there for social intervention. You have digitalization of NTA, $500 million. I have not met a single Nigerian who says my top priority is for NTA to be CNN standard. Who cares? So you have private TV stations, stations they're yes. doing well, yeah. you know, so we need to get a priority right now that we have all these challenges. Whatever money we are borrowing has to be that we're doing this for capital projects that are not commercially viable, but they are necessary for the development of the people. Oh, yeah. If we limit it to that, then it will be worthwhile. Otherwise, we just need to roll back on this borrowing plan. Mm. Now, the, the, for the federal government ASO crisis, what, what do you think is the best solution? What's the way forward for, for these two parties? They, they seem to always be a loggerhead and on each other's neck. What is, is there a permanent solution to all of this crisis and strike with ASO and the federal government? Yes. Yes, I think there is permanent solution. Okay. One of the permanent solutions is for people, either in ASO or in federal government, 
to understand that they're there to serve the people and not serve self. Most of the crises are based on self. They're just thinking about themselves. They ain't thinking about the larger society. Like you mentioned now, if ASU goes on strike, they're on two weeks one strike. And if they go on full-fledged strike, the students are going to be on the streets. Hmm. There is insecurity problem. There is going to be a lot of things to deal with. And in this present day, when we're dealing with coronavirus. So what I feel personally is ASU, uh, because I've, I'm one of the cr uh, critics of ASU on this IPPIS. I've spoken that why will someone employ you telling you this is why I want to pay you? And you, say, and you no. say no. But I've read some other articles where the ASU president uh, said, he listed some things, some of them are frivolous, but there were some that, that they're holding federal government on, okay. that they had an agreement that their, their own situation is peculiar. So they can't just bundle them on the general IPIS. The federal government is supposed to look at their situation as the university body and then bring in some certain things. They talked about their allowances that is not being captured in the IPPIS. Okay. So I think they need to sit down and discuss that. All right, quickly, I just want to take one or two headlines from the Vanguard newspaper so we can deliver within a few minutes we have left. Um, COVID-19, federal government confirms another case. And also, social media bill, kill it. NUJ, CSOs, Amnesty International, others tell Senate. And crack widens as acting scribe takes charge. Police partially on sales party secretary, that's the APC. Nabena, deputy spokesman, six Buhari's intervention. And South South leaders divided over Oshomane, Lagos APC backs him. Now, there was, there was a public hearing on um, the social media bill yesterday. Let me just quickly check to get your reactions, gentlemen. Tawa, I'll start with you. Yeah. No, I, I think that sometimes we get our priorities wrong. I just think that we are not at a point where we should even worry about social media at all. We have a lot of existing legislation to deal with, you know, fake news. Okay. If you're lying, you're spreading rumor, yes. or whatever it is. We can still deal with those. Uh, plus, I think that in the current format, this social media bill is not what we need at this time. Uh, we need all the freedom that we can get in Nigeria, particularly to do with governance, because our government is not the most transparent in the world. So you want to be able, for example, to have journalists who have the liberty to go out and do investigative journalism. Of course, I do acknowledge there are people who just make up stuff and they share it and they create a, yeah. a lot of, of problem yes. within the system. We have currently laws yeah, to deal with those. Laws, yes. Yeah, right. so we should we should just withdraw this bill. All right, thank you very much, Tawo, your delay partner, PwC, and also Femi Dowa, did Joke. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. And that's all we can take on Up the Press and Plus TV Africa. Join us again same time tomorrow for more on Up the Press. I am Benny Ark. Good morning.